Welcome back again, my celebrity nation. Today, we are working on types and properties of charges. And it's no other person than your celebrity teacher, Dr. U.D. Jesus. I hope you are ready for this lecture. Today, we are working on types and properties of charges. Fasten up your seatbelt as usual. Get ready so that we'll do what we know how to do best. Lecture objectives. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to give me all types of charges and the properties of charges. That's our target on this lecture. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to know all the types of charges and properties of charges. As simple as it may seem, it's something that your school may test you on in your exam or your assessment. Let's look at the previous lecture. Let's do a little revision on that. Remember our previous lecture, we discussed charge, the production of charge, the unit of charge, and the formula of charge. So today, I want us to look at it critically. Number one, definition of charge. We say charge is the product of the current in a material and the time the current spent in the material. So charge simply means the product of charge, it's the product of current and time. Production of charge. We say that charges are produced by friction when two bodies are put together to rub on each other such that an electron is rubbed off from one body. That one becomes positively charged and the one that rubbed off the electron becomes negatively charged. Unit of charge. Charge is measured in columns. And columns is the product of amperes and second. So when you say column, it simply means ampere second. The formula of charge. For revision papers, we did it better in the first topic. So if you want to know much about charge, you can look for our first topic and go through it, lecture one. But for now, the formula of charge says that Q is equal to current times time. Where Q is the quantity of charge measured in columns, I is current measured in amperes, and T is time measured in seconds. That means that the unit of charge columns is equal to ampere second. That's the formula for charge and the unit of charge. This is the revision of our previous lecture. Now let's go into today's lecture. Types of charges. There are two types of charges. The positive charge and the negative charge. The positive charge is obtained or the property of those particles who move from the positive pole to the negative pole. The positive charge has its examples, example, proton, positron, cations. Um, somebody may ask what are cations? Cations are bodies that lose electron. And because they lose electron, they have more positive charges than negative charges. Example of negative charges are electrons and anions. Anions are bodies that gained electron. And because they gained the electron, they have more negative charges. So we we'll say they are negatively charged. Now, positive charge, let's look at it critically. When you say positive charge, this is the charge of a body that moves from positive pole to the negative pole. Any body, any substance, any particle that always moves from the positive terminal or pole to the negative pole will say that the property which it's having is called positive charge. Example of such particles are proton, positron, cation. I've told you what cation is initially. That is a body that lost electron. Now, negative charges. 
these are properties of particles that moves from particles that move from negative pole to the positive pole in electric field. So any particle that moves from negative pole to the positive pole in electric field is considered negatively charged. Example, electron, antiproton, anions. Anions, again, is bodies that gained electron, so they are negatively charged. Properties of charges. The first thing you should know is that charge is additive in nature. You can add it up. It's additive in nature. Two, charge is conservative. You don't just lose it. No, but it can be transferred from one body to another. Quantization of charge, just as we mentioned additive, it means that charges can come together and still act as a single charge. Because the charge is an integral multiple of all that charges. So, charge is a scalar quantity. That's the next thing there. It's a scalar quantity, meaning that it has size, it has magnitude, but there is no associated direction. Charges are transferable. I've mentioned it before. Charge can move from one body to another body. So it's transferable. That is why when you mistakenly touch a naked electric wire that is plugged to a voltage source, what happens? It shocks you. That is transfer of charge. Now, interaction of charges. I tag this interaction of charges. That is attraction and repulsion of charges based on the system. When you have two like charges together, they repel each other. That is their mode of interaction. They repel. When you have two unlike charges together, they attract each other. I think we need to give more explicit illustration to this last one, attraction and repulsion. But before that, let's look at additive nature of electric charge. What does this really mean? It means that we can have two, three, four, five more charges adding up together. Now, it's not necessarily, it does not necessarily mean that they will add up and give a larger column of charge. No. Because when you add positive and negative together, let's assume I have five positive charges and I add three negative charges to it. I am not getting eight charges, no. Rather, what I'm getting is two charges. Why? The three from the five I originally have, which is positive, will cancel out with the three negative, making the system there neutral. And what is remaining is two. So that is what we have. So, but it's additive. You can add it up. That is why we said here Q is equal to sigma Q. Sigma there means summation of all charges. Now, let's look critically at interaction of charges. Attraction and repulsion of charges. Look at the left-hand side. Let's start from there. We have two charges, negative, negative. Your guess is as good as mine. You can see that both of them repel each other. If you look at the next diagram there, we have positive, positive. Both also repel each other. Then we'll look at the center one. Both of them are neutral. <laughs> now, I'm hearing somebody say, since negative, negative, like charges repel, positive, positive, like charges repel, neutral, neutral, they are also like charges. Why are they not repelling? No, there is no repel here, and they are not like charges. Why? They are neutral. There are no charges there. In each of this body you see, the net charge in them is equal to zero. Now, if you look at the last one there, on the right-hand side, we'll have negative and positive. Two unlike charges. What happens? They attract each other. In summary, what does this mean? Unlike charges attract. Like charges repel. Neutral bodies does not interact. They do not attract or repel. But that brings me to a question now that I want to ask you. 
I would like you to drop at the comment section. What do you think will happen if we bring one neutral body and one charged body, whether negative or positive? Explain to me what will happen. Will the neutral body repel the charged body or will it attract the charged body? Drop this on the comment section. Let it be our practice problem for this particular topic. Now, lecture review. Having taught you about types of charges, having gone through properties of charges, I hope you have learned. If you've not, there are only two types of charges, positive charge and the negative charge. Example of positive charge, we have proton, we have cations. Example of negative charges, we have electron, we have anions. You can also drop on the comment section all the positive and negative charges you know. Let it be a part of our learning for us. Now, for properties of charges, we say that charges are additive. That means you can sum up charges. Charges are transferable. It can move from one body to another. Charges are quantized. That means a charge is a multiple integral of other charges. Charges can interact in the sense that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. Before we conclude this lecture, don't forget my question. I said drop on the comment section, what do you think will happen if I have a neutral body and a charged body placed together? Would they attract? Or would they repel? Or would there be no interaction? Drop it at the comment section. Meanwhile, if you have any problem of what you think you've not understood in this lecture, go ahead and drop a feedback question at the comment section. Thank you for listening. Our next lecture will be on classification of solid matters based on conductivity. I also like you to read it up, check, read on classification of solid matters. We'll be looking at insulators, conductors, and semiconductors. For now, have a gracious day ahead. Remember what I said, if you encounter any problem, feel free to drop your feedback question at the comment section. Have a lovely day. Thank you very much.